Welcome, everybody. This is the Trader Circle, October 13th, 2024. I am not a financial advisor. Anything you guys see in this uh, video or any recording or any future classes are just for educational purposes only. So please do your research before you engage in trading. To get started, for those who may be new here, a uh, little different than my other classes where like the trade recap where we only go over trades. The Trader Circle is pretty much just a free group coaching class where anybody can attend and you can basically ask me anything. So anything to help you in your trading, in your life, anything goes. And I won't spend too much time going over random things. So we'll get it started. Uh, Bob, I had your question. I'm not sure if this was before when we just spoke prior offline, uh, you mentioned like distinguishing good setups from bad setups. And then you mentioned getting really good at avoiding setups when it's too close to call good from bad. Yeah. Yeah. Like for example, remember during session last week, uh, that one example that I sent you, I was asking about the, uh, the TTO on, I think it was on ES and it wasn't like a traditional setup that I would normally go for. But it, it did, it was right there, yeah. Uh, I don't think it was... It you was, remember the, the, it was a five-minute, right? I'm pretty sure five-minute, yeah. Oh, let me uh, bring up our chat. I'll see the exact date. I, I remember what you were mentioning as well. Was it the TTO? I thought so, yeah. The, oh, it's the one I think you asked me, like, what do I think about that setup? Yes. On yes. The 11th. So that was. It ended up not materializing. I didn't take that trade because it wasn't like my, my okay. ideal TTO, but it was kind of a TTO and it was already kind of past. Yeah. It was this one right here. So generally right. it was this, this is a valid TTO. Everything is bullish in our favor. We got the pullback and then it reversed back up. The only thing that I personally would not have liked about this one is this candle right here. Because generally, when the TTLs print, it doesn't close as a failed two up. Mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. a, two, a, a failed candle in strat terms, in this case here, you can see my screen, right? Yep. Cool. So uh, a failed two up or a two down is essentially, in this example, a failed two up is a candle that uh, broke above, but it failed to close above its entry point. So to me, this would be a failed two up. And if it closes red, even worse, because it, it can potentially signal a reversal. So mm -hmm. in this case, I would have been a little mindful about this candle here. If I was already in, it is what it is. I'm probably just going to stay in it and just write it out. Uh, what I did on this trade, I only took, I uh, see the red hammer just before the top of the, uh, the triangle there. Yeah, that one. Yep. I got in on the next two up just as it broke that mm -hmm. hammer and grabbed a couple points and then, and then I was done. But like, and I had to go do something else. But after it kind of reformed, I thought, oh, this looks like a good TTO that I probably would have taken if I was around. And that's why I kind of wanted to hear your opinion on it. But those those are the sorts of things that I was kind of looking for. Like what, what distinguishes like a, like it's got most of the markings, but like you said, that that uh, that shooter at the bottom right before the the takeoff. That that's kind of your signal that it's you know maybe not great. That was the kind of insight that I was asking about in the with, with my question. Of course, and the trade you took over here, pretty much a Momo hammer, super solid. I would prefer it to be green, but red is perfectly fine as well. Um, the TTO, of course, this is hindsight because we don't know what the candle is going to close as you know when we get in and stuff like that, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, give me. The so in this case, I would have gotten in and I would have just uh, uh, written it out. What I would say, though, is that this gave you, like, personally, I'm not going to let five points on ES go red. So that's why I always tell you guys, you know, to you can always have some discretion yeah. when taking some of these trades. Because in this example here, even though it didn't hit the TTO target at about nine points, from entry, it, it hit at least, uh, it went six points and then it reversed. I personally would not let 
a five point trade on ES or MES, go red, depending on your sizing. Of course, within if it's within your risk tolerance for the loss, I'll just let it ride. But I would not let five points go red. I'll take at least some off and then I'll keep the rest until it breaks that high and then potentially a runner if it heads higher. Mm -hmm. In this case, this is what I would have done. I would have trimmed some profit off at about five points, pretty much this candle, and then move my stop loss a little slightly above break even. And then this candle here would have stopped me out. And then it kind of just yeah. and then died back down. Yeah, so. yeah. And let me show you the... Uh, there was one on RTY that I took, or M2K rather. So M2K, this one is better, right? So similar to ES, a little hammer type action going on there. This candle, we broke above and then we closed above. There's no strong wick like we had on ES. And yeah. then kept on heading higher and then it finally completed and headed a little higher and then it reversed and then, you know, continued up through the day. So to me, this would be a better version than the one that we saw on ES. Again, granted, this is hindsight. I don't know that it's going to close as a shooter with a big wick until after. Yeah. Yeah. I would have yeah. That would have had me a little on edge if I'm being transparent once that shooter came down. Because generally for the TTOs, they just trigger up and they keep on closing higher and higher. This over here is another TTO that you can consider taking. However, like I, I said before, I'm pretty picky with my specific setups that I take. So this TTO, I wouldn't be looking to take, even though it is a valid one. I just don't like, you know, the way the camera yeah. compared yeah. to this one has more of a clean pullback as opposed to a one candle pullback and then a reversal. Again, a nice hammer at the takeoff point too. Mm-hmm. And again, you know, definitely valid, both of these. I just prefer them to look like this. And a lot of the market, you'll get similar looking setups every single week. You just have to wait for them. And I'm just super picky and I'd rather take the ones that I'm comfortable with. So I would just stick with these. How many would you say you get a week of TTOs and Ws? Uh, w so far for October has been really good. We've been getting, I think it was like four in the first week, but on average, anywhere between two and three on a good week. So is, is that per instrument or just total across all the ones that you check? I would say just for what I'm trading, yeah. which is YM or RTY. Sometimes it'll print on, on NQ or ES, but it won't print on YM or RTY at least mm -hmm. as clean as I would prefer it. Uh, there was one, I forget what day it was. There was one that printed on ES and NQ. Technically, there's one right here. I just wouldn't take that because there's too many, too many wicks in the center. I would ignore that one. That was an example. I was asking you another question about, does is it a valid sig um, formation when it spans a daybreak? Like, see how that one's that W started on the previous day and completed on the second day? Like, the, the top of the left side of the W is on the previous day. Yeah, there. Over here? No, no, no. Oh, you, yeah, oh gotcha. One. So, like, if I'm looking at previous day data for the potential W yes. completed, um, generally, I don't really look at that, but I'll just have it in my head. I'm like, well, technically, you know, we did have a pullback, and I'm just, like, filling the gap with just candles that came down. So yeah, you can look at that as like the completion of the of the W. Generally, the ones that we'll usually take, the W would be like the high would be during that same day. Mm. But you can still use this use this as an example. I'm personally not gonna hold. Let's say it like close up here, market market close. I'm not gonna hold it overnight, waiting for the previous day completion to hit. Granted, the Ws don't really print near end of day, so yeah. This one over here, not the cleanest, but I'll accept it. This one happened pretty much towards the end of the day. You get a higher low, then just take the reversal back up and it hit the first target and then it kind of just faded away. 
Mm -hmm. We have another one over here on ES. Not the cleanest because we had this like H pattern and then it went into the W. But still, these I like, you know, looking at these at the comparison, you can see how the center isn't, there's not so much sideways movement. It's kind of just, it comes up, then it comes back down in generally a quick succession. Yeah, yeah. Similar to this one over here, when it reversed back down, it was just a two candle reversal to the downside. This one was like a three candle, more or less. So when it, ha when it, has, a, when it has a lot of candles like this, I would leave it alone. I don't like that personally. Mm. This one, I think I took this one, if I recall correctly. Even though I would say I was hesitant to take it because I generally don't take it. I, I've never seen like a shooter. I don't see this often. It's like a shooter candle. And then you take the reversal. It's still valid. I just personally am a little wary when I don't see yeah. either a hammer or just a regular two down, two up or a three up, things like that. So you can kind of discern whichever ones you want to take specifically when it comes to that. Did that help clear it up? Yeah, it does. Sweet. This one, like this one is like perfect. You get the move down from open, pretty clean reversal to the downside, prints a hammer, and you just take that up. Yeah. Cool. Woods, welcome. You wanted to go over discipline? What specifically about discipline? Really? It's really, it was just what I was liking. The I really just need to go over it. It's just like, when I, you know, like I said last time, you say get your money and get out. Some days I feel like I can just, I can just keep staying in. What causes that feeling that you can keep on staying in? Well, it's not even the staying in. It's like I play uh, it's like really up in my sizes in my trades. Mm -hmm. Like after I feel that I did good, I feel like I could just like up my sizes and stuff uh, like that. Yeah. Gotcha. So the emotional confidence is what I usually mm -hmm. call this. So uh, let me ask you a question. Is upping your size when you, when you get a green trade part of your trading plan? No. So we always have to refer back to our trading plan, right? It's like, all right, um, what is a successful version of me doing, right? Yeah. Um, in, in his trading plan, does he have upping my size when I do well? If the answer is no, then we can't do that. Because again, you know, that's when we get into trouble where let's say for the sake of the conversation, you want to trade with five MES and you made, let's say, 200 bucks. And then you're like, ooh, all right. I'm feeling this win. Let me use one ES or 10 MES now. And then you may lose that trade. And because you're sized and bigger, you're, you might actually end red or give a lot of that profit back because of the increased sizing. So it's really always just going back to our trading plan and, and remembering and even talking ourselves down. Because uh, when we're in a good mood, after wins or losses, or even just in general, that can be equally as dangerous if we're fearful, greedy, or um, you know, like we're like you, you're angry, revenge trading, things like that. So both spectrums are bad for trading. I remember, I think like last month, uh, my cousin he gave me a call. So actually, he texted me. He's like, "Hey, I'm looking at his TTO on YM." I'm like, ah. so "I'm like, so am I." We both got in. It was a really, really good one, and we were like bouncing off the walls. He called me, or I think I called him to see if he exited and he did. And we were just like super hyped. And I was like, all right, we're too excited. We got to get off. So we shut everything down and, you know, went for a walk because I, I already know myself. And that's another thing. It's like knowing yourself, right? Yeah. I already know myself. I know for a fact that if I stay on the computer when I'm like excited, 
or like after 12 noon when I'm not supposed to trade, I'm going to take more trades. Like I know for a fact. So it's always having things like in place to protect us against ourselves. So for me, as soon as I feel that, I'm going for a walk and I got to clear my head and like relax or shut everything down and then, you know, go do something else for a bit and then I'll come back. Or I'll just take, you know, take my money and just completely shut everything down because um, it's happened way too many times in the past for me when I was too excited, like you mentioned, and then I'll just yeah. keep trading and give that money back when I could have just been happy with what I made. So. Nah, for sure. Every time I win, then just go play basketball. I'd be good. <laughs> there you just go. Doing it. Yeah, there you go. Go play football, <laughs> get some shots in, and then, you know, go do your journal and then chill for the rest of the day and come back tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Sweet. Uh, Vincent, welcome. Vincent, you were asking about uh, what trading strategies and indicators to use. You And then the second half, you mentioned what time charge to use and for what reason. Do you mean more so the time frame to use and for what reason? Yeah, uh, that's what I meant. Cool. So a uh, quick question for you. How long have you been trading for? I've been trading or... I've had a demo account for about two months, and then now I just put some money in there, and so, uh, yeah, so about two months. When you were trading on demo, uh, did you get consistent results? Uh, no, not really. But I was I just wanted to do it because I I wasn't getting consistent results, but now since I put my uh, so I'm using uh Weibo right now. as the uh, brokerage and so i just put money in there and now i'm watching a bunch of like youtube videos and now i'm, I'm really trying to get into uh day trading and all that so yeah I am definitely glad you mentioned that. Let's have a little crash course on trading efficiently and properly. So all right my opinion, you take with this information what you will. It's just from my experiences with many people that I've worked with and trained. If you are new to trading and you have not shown any consistency in demo, you have no business trading real money at all. You should stick to demo until you're consistent. I'll ask you a few questions. Uh, do you journal any of your demo trades? I do not. Do you know what to journal? I do not. Do you have a good understanding of risk management and how much to risk per trade? Uh, I was uh, watching a YouTube video. They said to do about, if you're like starting out, about like 2% would be like a good amount. Yeah, definitely good. It's a good idea. Uh, And then the opposite, uh, so like, so if you were like, so if you're, the amount you're trying to gain is about like $200, then the opposite should also be the amount of money you're going to lose is $200. That's what somebody was telling me. yeah, you can definitely have a risk reward of one to one. Some of my setups have a risk reward on one of one to one. Uh, I just only reserve those for the higher probability trades. Another question to ask you is, do you have a list of rules, even though you're a little new to trading? Uh, yeah, I do. So, this are uh, so the rules I have is so I buy stocks from the price of two dollars to twenty dollars, mm -hmm. and the uh volume is like it has to have a lot of volume, and the percentage increase is about ten percent or higher, mm -hmm. and uh it has to have some type of news because. I would like to know like why it's increasing, not it's not increasing because it's just increasing. And then uh float has to uh less than 20 million shares. I didn't really get that one, but So the float is essentially like how many outstanding shares there are to purchase. The lower amount or the lower float or the lower amount of shares that are out there to be purchased, the higher chance that the price can be manipulated in or against your favor. So let's say for the sake of the conversation, 
if a stock is $2 and there's only a million and a half shares, right? Uh -huh. So if somebody's buying a lot of those shares, it's going to squeeze the price and it, and it gives the, it gives you the chance of, uh, let's say if you're in the trade going long to make more money, if the price continues higher, uh, to give you a better example, just mm -hmm. Let's say there's a stock that has 100 million shares or float, right? Okay. So one that has 1 million. If somebody buys half a million shares in the 100 million float stock, that's not going to move it as much as if somebody buys half a million on the 1 million float stock. So uh, when I trade penny stocks, when I first started four years ago, uh, my mentor, that's pretty much all he taught me how to trade. And that's pretty much all we did, just trade low float stocks under like 2 million. So they usually get squeezed when short sellers try to, you know, sell it down. And the price is a lot more volatile because the float is pretty small. So that's definitely good. What I would say for you, since you are new, uh, to answer your question on indicators, I don't use any indicators per se. Like I have, like in the traditional sense, like EMAs and things like that, RSI, I don't use none of that. As a new trader, I would probably say not to use any indicators because you really want to understand price action and, and reading the chart as is first. And then from there, once you understand that and you have a solid foundation, then you can add other things to it. Because what I find that new traders tend to do is Let's say if you're on YouTube, they're like, oh, this magic indicator. Like if you use VWAP, which VWAP is fine. I know people use VWAP. I'm not, I'm not trash talking any indicators. I'm more so just getting to the point that if you're a new trader, you want to understand market structure, price action, so on and so forth. Until um, then, then you can introduce indicators because you don't want to rely on an indicator. And even though I'm biased against them, but generally when it comes to indicators, they're lagging indicators, right? For example, let's say you're using, I think, what was the popular one? Like a 920 or 921 EMA cross to go long or short. By the time that cross is to go long for the strat, for those who trade the strat, we might be in three bars prior. So we can get in way earlier than the EMA crossover people. Again, if it works for you, hey, don't listen to me. Keep on doing what you're doing. But you being a new trader, uh, definitely focus on price action. Uh, you mentioned on um, a strategy. If you go to my YouTube channel, go to the playlists section. And then uh, Surely Mind Academy, that's my YouTube. Go to the, the strat playlist. That pretty much goes over the strategy that I use. So you can, and it goes over each uh, component of it. Since you're new, I would start off using the four hour, the one hour, 30 minute and the 15 minute if you want to. Because if you're, what I find is with new traders with the strat, they tend to get on the five minute and there's too much noise. You really just want to grasp it first before you go on the lower time frames like that. So strat, definitely recommend uh, for the strategy. I've been using it for two and a half years and it's been the best thing that I ever discovered. And in the sense of when I ask you about journaling, if you go into the psychology of trading and uh, building your trading system playlist, check out the journaling video and the risk management video. So you can be extremely clear on what that is. Because as a new trader, what you really want to be doing now is collecting as much data as you can, understanding what works, understanding what doesn't work. And the reason why I always recommend people to stay on demo until they get all that information and understand what's going on is because what you don't want that I've seen in many people is that they'll prematurely use their real money. And depending how much they're using, they may lose a lot of money. And some people that come to me uh, that use their real money first when they never got the proper foundation is that because they lost so much money, now they have a psychological trauma to be dramatic. And I would be dramatic because it is that serious. Where now that they've lost all that money, it, 
it, it, it adds extra challenges for them to overcome, right? So if you're new or even just in general, if you don't have a solid foundation, if you don't know what your setups are, if you don't know how to journal risk management or your trading system is, do not use your real money until you are very clear and until your demo or paper trading account, you have some type of consistency there, at least strategy-wise. Because once you develop the strategy, when you start getting into the real money, then you're going to have to work on your psychology because a lot of things are going to come out um, you know, when you start using real money. So just my two cents on the matter for those who okay. you and you know. Well, maybe new. Uh, one more thing. So, for the uh, so I did mention I was using a uh, Vivo, right? Is that fine? Do you think that's okay, or do you think I should switch to another one? No, Weeble's no. fine. I used to use Weeble. I use Thinkorswim now. Thinkorswim, okay. This somebody recommended me that too, but uh, I haven't uh really seen it, so I was just getting more opinions on the matter. Definitely. So uh, Thinkorswim, the learning curve in the beginning is a little challenging at first since the user interface is not as clean or simple to use. But once you understand it, it has everything you need. Um, I do love Weeble, though. I would say that the user interface is super clean, which I love. So, but I use Thinkorswim. So either one is fine. Whatever you prefer, honestly. I just prefer having everything here. So take your time, you know, don't worry too much about making money now. Um, just study up, get consistent. Uh, every Friday at 7 p.m. Eastern, we have the trade recap. So definitely join us for that. And I'll go over my trades. I can go over your trades as well if you want. Just uh, stop by. So Okay. And where do you sign up for that? It's just on the YouTube channel. Oh, so okay. at 7 p.m., I go live every Friday. So you just go on the YouTube channel, you'll see where it says live. And it'll okay. and you usually have the video where you can notify yourself for that. So. Yeah, I see it. Okay. Sweet. All right. Thank you. Absolutely. DK, welcome. Uh, let's see. DK, I'm not sure what your name is in the questionnaire. So uh, if you can let me know, I can answer your question. <laughs> we can go over what you asked. And you guys, if you have any other questions, you can put in the chat too. I wasn't asking anything. I was just observing. Gotcha. A lot of observers today, which is fine. I always like to encourage people who are new just to start getting used to the lingo and things like that. If you are new, trust me, a lot of these things is it's like, what the heck is he talking about? But once you spend more time in this area, it'll be a lot easier for you to absorb things. And again, you know, take your time. It took me quite a bit to really understand everything. But once you know it and you get some screen time in, it'll make it a lot easier. So one thing I've been hearing a lot about lately that I was curious if you'd mind showing is uh, breaker blocks. Ooh, breaker blocks. I had no idea about breaker blocks. I don't okay. okay. I can show you like in a picture form and we can try to dissect it. But like some ICT thing, like even order blocks, Apparently the W is an order block. Well, that's the thing. Like, so when I'm trading, I, you know, people, oh, good, you know, breaker block or what? Okay. I don't really know what it is. So that's why I was curious. Let's look at some examples. Uh, ch -ch -ch. All right, so this is a breaker block. It, it still doesn't make sense to me because what this looks like is it looks like a TTO on the left side. And then on the entry, you're just catching like a delayed strat entry, if that makes sense. Hmm. So for me, again, I don't really know what the breaker block, like how to... Um, the rationale for why it is what it is. Yeah, yeah I'm I'm more visual. Excuse me, I'm more visual. 
So for me, what this looks like is when the TTO completes, at least whatever this pattern is, I guess, um, you just have a buy sitting like where we would have gotten in for the strat as a limit order over here. And then these candles would have filled you, then it takes you higher. So, and I have to discover what time frame. I know King in yellow, this is like his A plus setup. I still have not like dissected or like really understand it. Um, even order blocks, right? Um, I haven't like, looked at those yet either. Like order blocks to me just look like, like oh, we have a bullish breaker block here, right? This right here is very different than what's over here. So for me, like I said, I'm, I'm very visual and, and those two images look very, very different. So I'm like, which one is it? Is it this or is it this? To me, this just looks like a, a TTO completed and then market structure wise, you're just getting in at the top of that level when the TTO completed. So you're having, you're placing buys when it retraces back. Hmm. So looking at it on a market structure level. Uh, so we get the TTO that completes and then it looks like the breaker block is just, it, it, it pulls back to where the TTO completed to head higher to kind of form yeah. a one almost at least that's what I can assume from this picture here. Got one TTL, then another one there. But for for um, ICT people, they'll they'll be using like limit orders. When for us, we're just using like buy stops to get in as soon as it breaks. So they'll probably have a limit order just sitting here. And like order blocks, right? For, for us, for the Ws, we want more of a bigger pullback in the center, but we can kind of see this as a W, right? Just not as what we're usually used to. Yeah, yeah. So it's kind of how I think for ICT people, they're getting in on the retracement back down. So they'll be looking to get in like once it hits the center of the W to get, get in buys. But for us, we're going to be in a lot earlier um, down over here in this area. So hopefully that helped in any type of way. Again, I don't trade ICT. I just like know of it. Like fair value gaps are very easy to spot, things like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, and even like TTLs, right? You, we can break it down in the sense of um, a TTO just usually pulls back into a fair value gap and then it reverses. So uh, let me see, let me go to the RTY because that one was cleaner. So over here, so this one didn't necessarily dip into a fair value gap. This one over here did. So we have a fair value gap. Uh, where's my box? Oh, whoops, that is not what I want. So we have fair value gap here. So ICT people, they're probably gonna be getting having buys in fair value gaps. But for me, like I mentioned, I rather get into what I'm used to. So I will get in. Um, essentially right here when it reverses back up. So it bounced off fair value gap and then you just reverse back up. So ICT stuff, I, I would use it like as additional confluence, but my trade would never be based on like ICT concepts. Yeah. I think they're going to have the, the Asia trading session tomorrow instead because the low volume tonight and tomorrow. So tomorrow night, I think they're going to have it. They'll probably go over that more than likely. But yeah. Uh, what other questions did you guys have? Whatever you want, put it in the chat or come off mute.
for the new people who are new, any question you want, there's nothing such as a stupid question, especially in this business. Did I answer everybody's question already? Yeah, 20 more minutes. We can end early, that's fine. I'll give you guys four minutes to think about it. If nothing else pops up, then we'll just wrap up. DK, how long have you been trading for? If at all. Absolutely. All right. Let's look for the kid in play. This could be an example, right? Get the flat bodies in the top. This I wouldn't look as a kid in play. This will be more of like an evening star pattern. Because for the kid in play, we want the red candle for the body to be a little more solid towards the bottom. When it's a doji, that's just something completely different that I personally don't care for. I usually just ignore these, even though it's a valid trait, because as we know, when a doji prints at the high of an uptrend, that signifies a reversal. So you can take that as a regular, you know, two up, two down um, trade. So in the sense of a kid and play model, this is not one that I would take, even though it has the big green candles, flat bodies, the big wick, short wick. I just don't like this bottom wick. So I would have ignored that one. Or I would have taken it just as an evening star reversal pattern, but not as a kid and play. Technically, this TTO is a um, on the bullish kid and play model. We get the short wick, the bodies are evened up, but similarly, you know, we have a wick here, right? Although I wouldn't see this trade as a kid in play, I would kind of just see it more so as a, you know, a TTO model. But if you really wanted to get extra confidence, you'd be like, well, you know, we have the flat bodies, short wick, long wick, I'm gonna take that up. So that could be an example there. Uh, let's see if we can find some others. Some people have asked me, like, what if the green candle and then the short one is red? That's something completely different. I wouldn't look at that as a kid and play setup. So like something like this, the way the body is, I, I, if the body is like flat like this, I'm taking that, no questions asked. This specific one I wouldn't have taken because this wick is too long, which I don't like. This is something that I would take 
I think I actually took this one as a three down, which I usually don't like doing. So flat bodies, no wick, longer wick, you take that to the downside. Generally, I don't like taking the three candle versions. You can definitely take them if you want to. I just don't prefer them. But, you know, I gave you two, two examples here. Take, take the three down or the three down. This will be more in line with what I would want. The flat bodies. I would want this wick to be a little shorter, but I'll accept it for this example. We get the long candle, the failed two up into a red. And then we just take that short to the downside. Stop loss, as always, is the body of this candle. And then you just target the previous lows until you get stopped out. So this one would have been a real nice one. Four and a half points. by 4.3 with the slippage. And the stop loss is pretty tight at 1.2. So these are always nice. And they can print on any time frame. I prefer to find them on the uh, 30 minute and the one hour. The one hour specifically using extended data. They don't print as often with regular data for whatever reason. Yeah, we have an example there. The wick is a little high for me, but still you can accept that one. Flat. Take that to the short side. This one would have failed. Actually, I would not have taken this one. This body is weight is too high compared to the body of the red candle. I think NVIDIA had one on the four hour that I mentioned to you guys. Uh, when was it? Yeah, so it was on this day. So we had the fail two up. The candles are a little even. I Like I mentioned to you guys that day, if the candle, if the next candle hits anywhere on this body, even if, even if it, let's say, opened up here and then triggered, I wouldn't have taken that down. Because the kid in play, it always opens up as a two around here, and then it triggers down. It never opens up higher and then triggers lower. So something to keep in mind of. Sorry, just to clarify that point. So you're saying that when the actual reversal happens, it'll start with like toward the lower end of the... Yeah, like down that way, as opposed to starting in the upper half. Exactly, because the kid in play, the the price never, if it's a valid one, price never hits this body. If it's the body, I'm getting stopped out. In this case, it opened up above that area, so it's no longer a kid in play. Mm. So if it op as long as it opens up under this body and it doesn't hit that body, it's a valid trade for me. I'm taking it. Is that cleared up a little better? On I think so. Uh, you think so? What's the what's the think part? What what can we clear up or try to clear up? When you said that when it opens up, <clears throat> I guess what I'm not clear on is when the entry candle opens. Mm -hmm. If it opens within the body of the one of the like the setup candle, then it's valid. But if it opens above, it's not. In this case, uh, we can probably disregard this, and this is a four-hour candle. Mm. Generally, when you're day trading, you're not going to see it close, open up that high, because that's just a gap that happened, yeah. right? Uh, but generally, you're never going to see that. You're, gonna, you're never going to see it open up that high while you're actually day trading. Uh, let me see if I can find an example for you. So let's say this one, right? The body opened up pretty much where it closed. It came up, it didn't hit the stop loss, but it, it got flushed back down and hit all these targets. So when you're saying, so in that case, did it hit the body? I guess that's what I was confused about. You said if it touches the body at all, 
then it's not not valid. Yeah, so if it opens up inside and then it hits the body and then the triggers, I'm not taking that because... So it opens up inside and then hits the body. Tell me, tell me, explain. That's the part that I'm confused on. All right, so you see this wick right here? Yeah. If this wick... So if this candle opens up in, as an inside bar, yeah, it comes up and hits this body, I'm not going to take that thing. Oh, okay, I see. When you say the, the hits this body, you mean like the... The setup the, body. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I see, I see. Yep. Now I get it. So in this case, the valid ones, they would never, ever hit this body, the, the setup candle. For those who are not sure what a setup candle is, this is the setup candle. Oops. And then this is the trigger candle or the candle that got me into the trade. So the valid uh, kid and play let me actually bring it up over here real quick. So this is like picture perfect, right? We get the flat bodies, little to no wick, big wick, flat body. You can have a, you can have a small wick like we had over here. That, I'll accept that. And then we take the two down, right? Price never came up here and hit that. Right. Okay. So it should it should be coming up a little bit and then tripping you in and then just dying off. In this case, it looks like it opened up, came up, or may have triggered down a little bit, came up, and then it came back down. Looking at the time, this was at 10, probably a news wick brought it up a little bit, and then it got killed back down. So... Uh, my stop loss is always going to be at the body. Something to note, the stop loss on this one is 112 points. I'm still going to take the trade, but with a much uh, a, a smaller size, probably like one third of what I'm comfortable with because 112 points on YM, as you would know, is uh, it can hurt. So I'll probably maybe use like three or four micros on that, on that, on this one here. That'll be... Uh, I think like 25 per micro for 50, like $200, $200 loss, more or less, if we're four micros. So I don't really like taking trades that are, that'll give me one $300 loss. So I'll probably use uh four to six just to stay within that two to $300 loss range if it does go against me. Did that clear it up better for you? Yes, it did. That Sweet. Helped. That, that was all of what I was looking for. Thank you. Excellent. I started doing this thing where um, just to switch things up, and people are like, oh, you know, I think I got it. It's like, all right, let's spend more time so we don't, we're not, we're not thinking anymore. We're we're clear. You know what the confusion was? It was it was the terminology, the body. So when you're saying hit the body you were referring to either the the open or the close, right? Like those levels. When I think of the body, I think of anywhere between the open and the closing, like including the open and the close. So if the wick touches the body, in my mind, I was thinking if it gets anywhere between the open and the close, that's valid. And that wasn't aligning with what you were describing exactly. That's why I was confused. So now I get it. Which is fair. I, I tend to, uh, I always forget that like people don't have my brain. So I'm like, <laughs> oh, the body, like this body, like like the stop loss body, <laughs> the setup candle. Body. Yeah, yeah. But no, definitely thank you for uh, asking that again so we can clear it up even further. Any last questions you guys have? I'll give you 30 seconds and then we'll just... Uh, what do the numbers represent? Ooh, great question. Uh, so Vincent, the numbers are the scenarios for the strat. I'll just bring up the ebook to just make it easier. Uh, let's go here. So the one, they just signify an inside bar. So a candle that's trading be, uh, within the range of the previous candle. A two, pretty straightforward, a directional bar, 
If it breaks the low, a two down. If it breaks the high, a two up. And then the three is an outside bar or a mother bar or engulfing bar, different names for it. It could be a three up or a three down. So a one turns into a two, a two turns into a three. And then with the different candles or the different um, scenarios, you can have different setups. For example, you can have a two and two bullish reversal. So if this, if the candle over here, if this candle broke, let's let's pretend there's a candle here. If this candle broke this candle's low and then it printed a two one, and then the next candle breaks above the inside bar, it's a bullish reversal. So taking the different scenarios, you can get different setups. And with the strat, it makes it extremely easy. It tells you when to get in, when to get out, and when to do nothing. For example, when there's an inside bar, we don't do anything because there's no trigger. We're, we, we're waiting for a candle to break, right? So in this case, a two and two bullish reversal, as soon as this candle breaks this high, we're getting in immediately. We're not waiting for the candle to close, none of that. We're immediately getting into the trade. Did that make sense? Any questions on that? And uh, that was good. Thank you. Sweet. And definitely you being new, check out uh, the strat. It, it was like the greatest thing I ever discovered. It makes trading extremely simple, like ridiculously simple once you understand it. Cool. So since we're nearing the end, what was everybody's biggest takeaway? What was the biggest thing that you learned to, in today's session? You can put it in the chat, come off mute, whatever you want. <laughs> yeah, Woods, you know, definitely uh, look into the strat. And you don't have to learn everything, right? Woods, just learn some of the setups. Like TTOs, it's easy money when you are trading trend days. Yeah, definitely with the kid and play setups. Because for me, I used to see those. So like what even prompted me to like do more research on that setup. I remember one time, one day Brown, he was like, oh, I took this, I took this reversal on the one hour. And then I was looking at the way the candles looked and I'm like, I've seen this multiple times before. There has to be something here. And then I spent like a week just going back a few months and I kept on finding that same pattern. And, and it looked just like the good version that I've shown you. And I'm like, all right, this is definitely a good setup to take. The stop loss is clearly defined. The entry is clearly defined. The targets are clearly defined. And the kid in play was born. Remember, the market is not random. It is programmed. You just got to find the program and you'll be good. Definitely, Vincent, be consistent in paper trading before using real money. Trust me, I, I've worked with many, many people and many people who lost a lot of money um, where it created more challenges for them to overcome. And I don't want that to happen to you or anybody that's new. So, and I've heard many, many horror stories. People, you know, waste you losing their life savings, um, lost a lot of money, and they don't tell their wives or their husbands. I've heard many, many stories, and I'd rather have you guys not go through those trials and tribulations because it can be extremely painful. So... I do what I can to give you guys proper guidance. Again, I'm not here claiming to be the best trader of all time. I'm not here to be the best trader of all time. I'm just here to give you my experiences and let you know what I've seen that works and what doesn't work. So other than that, thank you guys as always. I, I'll put up this recording probably, probably tomorrow at 5 p.m. Eastern time on YouTube. It'll be in the Trader Circle playlist.
other than that, appreciate you guys for coming out, asking your questions, and I will see you guys on the internet. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Good night.